What's up everybody, it's Conflicted here. Today I'll be giving a song breakdown for my new single, Secure. You can find it on iTunes, Google, Amazon, uh, Spotify, also on my Bandcamp page, which is conflicted.bandcamp.com. Uh, it'll be coming to a couple of other stores soon as well, such as Tidal. Um, there are two versions of the song as well, so you have an explicit version, which is the original, as well as a clean version with completely clean lyrics. Uh, so in case you want your kids to listen to it with you, or just whatever the case may be, uh, there are two versions for you. Uh, so first, let me actually give the, the story behind how the song was created and the concept behind the song. So originally, uh, when I actually originally started on this song, it was intended to be used by somebody else. So about halfway of the first verse was not actually intended to be me or performed by me. Um, so I really was just writing a story. And that was kind of fitting that sort of R&B, pop, rap hybrid that a lot of people do these days. Um, and with the intent of somebody else using the song. So I was going for more of a commercial appeal. Um, that fell through. So then I, I kind of took the song and flushed it out a little bit more and decided to use it for my Songwriter Showcase series, which is on YouTube, currently on hiatus, kind of restructuring some things and determining how we want to do them moving forward, uh, whether or not it's going to be weekly or monthly or bi-weekly. Um, and what format exactly to put it into so that will be coming back at some point um, but for right now so hiatus where I'm focusing on some of these other projects I'm working on so um, basically after I wrote the chorus for it, the second verse I decided just to kind of do something that's a little bit more indicative of me so the second verse is a little bit more actually a reflection of me and my ideology and what I stand for um, in the context of it being a love song, of it being sort of somewhat of a commercial love song, but the second verse is where the substance comes in. So to kind of give an overview of the concept before I actually get into the lyrics, the concept um, actually is just the first verse is really representing young love, infatuation. Um, the second verse is more so representing mature love, real commitment, real devotion a real faithful bond that goes beyond just the uh, you know, infatuation, puppy love stage and just physical attraction and gets into more of the actual spiritual, mental, uh, emotional component. So that's basically what the song represents. It's kind of just a flow, coming of age, growing up, just maturing in love. Uh, so let's actually get into the lyrics. So I'm actually going to skip the first verse because the first verse is completely straightforward. Um, it's not at all something that really requires interpretation. It's just very straightforward, simplistic by design. And we'll go, so I'll start from the chorus. The chorus is even with the bling and the cars and the pearls. Nothing can compare to the arms of my girl. You can separate all the stars in the world. Never be apart because we are that secure. So straightforward, but basically just saying that no matter what, whether it's luxury, success, um, even the world itself and, uh, and all the distractions outside of the actual union between this man and this woman, uh, what's most important to him is his girl, is his woman, is the bond that they share, the devotion they share to each other and supporting one another. Uh, I really wanted to put an emphasis on that with this song because uh, we live in a world especially uh, especially uh, African American people of where relationships are so dysfunctional and uh, there's so much jabbing that takes place between men and women in general but even more so in the black community because I mean, we, we normally of course are very poor so with that extra pressure and then just the things that come with being a disenfranchised people it's hard to stay together, it's hard to stay true to each other, it's hard to, to block out distractions, friends, whatever the case may be. So I wanted to make a song where it was really celebrating love in all of its facets. Um, because it had sort of a range of romance, devotion, faithfulness, but even the playful playfulness, even a little bit of roughness to it in terms of the sexuality of it. 
because all of that's part of relationship and depending on the personalities of the people involved. So I didn't really want to hold anything back. Just wanted to be a full scope. Uh, moving into the second verse, it gets a little bit more rapid. So I break that down line by line or kind of in a block form. So it's, I don't need your preferral, I just let it be. Strange thing when the guts send in the same frames, the brains telling me click with insane chemistry. Explained in the synergy when we exchange chemically or connect with chemic kinetic energy. So, of course, I don't need your preferral, I just let it be. It's very simple. I'm just saying that I don't need uh, approval or validation of who I am, what I'm doing, or who I choose to be with in a relationship and the bond that we share. It's just saying that we block all that out and we're just going to be who we are and we're just going to enjoy that. Um, strange thing when the gut's sending the same friends, the brain's telling me. So it's basically saying that the intuition, the, uh, the chemistry, the physical attraction, the emotional connection, the mental vibe, the spiritual vibe, it's all there, it's all aligned together. So if I sit down and make a pros cons list, it would be yes. If I just went off my gut feeling and my instinct, it would be yes. So I'm basically kind of giving the, in my opinion, the, the, the steps to recognizing a good partner is that it's more than just one or two connections. You vibe on a lot of different levels uh, with each other. So um, click with insane chemistry, explaining the synergy when we exchange chemically or connect with chemic kinetic energy. So drawing off what I just said about connecting on all the levels and saying that that is indication that we are able to vibe and connect on basically every chakra. So you can look at it like whether it's a uh, sexual aspect of it, physical attraction, whether it's actual spiritual bond and getting through those hard moments, those hardships, because you're going to need more than chemistry and physical attraction when you start going through hardships or if something wants to happen. Somebody can get in an accident, lose a job, all these things are part of life. And if it's a real love, it's a real bond, you have to have other things to secure that beyond just the simplistic uh, connection. So, um, connect with chemical kinetic energy. Obviously, I'm saying more from, uh, in this, this standpoint, I'm talking from a black love perspective. Even though the song is universal, but I'm saying that sort of, uh, that bond between black man and black woman because that's something that we don't have a lot of images of anymore. Um, we don't have a lot of movies about that anymore. We don't have a lot of music about that anymore. Um, we don't get a lot of images of that anymore. And that's very important. It's a very important bond. It's a very important aspect of the culture that needs to be re-embraced, re-established, and sort of uh, just kind of addressed. Because it's gotten to the point where it's just like we're always attacking each other. So, uh, moving on. Feed me your femininity into the spiritual plane. Let me ease your pain and misery. We essentially came to entangle memories. So need for game simply plain is history. So that's to me pretty simple, but I'm just saying that when you get past the physical and even the mental and the emotional as well. You move more to a spiritual between the essence of this person and yourself. Then once you connect on that level, it should surpass the need to uh, have to play around each other. Uh, whether that's uh, faithfulness, whether that's honesty, uh, any of those things. It should just kind of be a lot smoother of a connection because you already kind of know each other. You already see each other on a more uh, significant level so you should be able to just be just up front you should be that anyway in my opinion but in that case you should feel that comfort because you already sort of have insights to each other that may not be normally there when you're dealing with a person it's like you can kind of skip uh, time almost it's like uh, kind of know each other more intimately than people you might have known for years so why spend so much time playing these little silly games like you already are on an intimate level. Um, we meant to be flame, sparking our thoughts through rain, and remain here to be endlessly committed, uplifting each other. I love you. Another would never disrupt the structure we form. You know the haters be swarming, but 
So when I say meant to be flame, sparking our thoughts through rain, um, that's imagery, metaphor. But basically what I'm saying is I look at a relationship as it's like if we're carrying torches through the rain, um, the torch is going to go out. It's raining. But if we take the initiative and we take the dedication to light each other's flames throughout our journey, then we make sure that we, we never run out of juice, so to speak. So it's kind of like uh, we both act as muse and artists, or we both act as charger and battery. So at certain points, I may need to be the battery. I, I get a little bit low, charge me up. You may need to be the battery. You get low, I charge you up. And we just kind of work like that. So it becomes like a sort of a um, renewable energy source. You never run out of juice because you're always feeding each other. You're uplifting each other. Um, you're picking each other up when you stumble. You're picking each other up when you fall. And you just kind of keep growing with that. Uh, remain here to be endlessly committed. Uplifting each other. I love you another. Whenever the structure will be forming. Never the haters be swarming. But so that's just staying faithful and committed. Through all the obstacles. Through other people. I mean, um, I think one of the major things a lot of people deal with is... If somebody else comes along while they're in with their partner, you never know. It may you may be having problems at that time, and then you meet somebody who seems really cool. But if that was a true bond, then you should stay true to it. Now there are cases where maybe that's not the case, and maybe sometimes that's what it takes for a person to know that they need to move on. But if you know that this is a person that you really are committed with and you guys have been through these many struggles then you shouldn't just the newest pretty face or the newest smile and then just jump off the ship so um, it's, just, it's just talking about commitment there and not letting haters as well because some people will be upset if they see people happy and they will want to come in and like find things to say like well blah 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 and all of a sudden all these questions and insecurities that weren't there before start coming up hey, it can break people apart at times so you have to know how to shut that out um, now this part is different depending on if it's the clean or the explicit version but since the explicit is the original I'm going to go off that uh, the line you ain't got to worry about it getting boring because I'm the type of guy that fucks you like you would bitch you birth 270 bastards still kissing cutting you after um now for some people that may be too raunchy, so I did make a clean version, completely different words, completely clean, but the premise behind it is just saying that no matter what we do, uh, really in any sense, but of course in this case I'm talking sexually, that the respect is there, the love is there, the admiration is there, the, the bond is there, so that's the, the point of the still kissing cut of you after, and it's a joke. Uh, afterwards, I say I love to hear that laughter, but it, it's literal in the sense of we can explore the different aspects of ourselves, whether it's the harsher part, or it's the freaky part, whatever the case may be. And there still should be a level of respect and stuff there remaining. It shouldn't be something that diminishes ourselves to ourselves because we know each other. Um, you should have that level of familiarity to where you can have fun with your partner. Otherwise, what are you doing? You should be able to enjoy your life with the person that you're with. Uh, so chilling, kicking it off at the end, we can do whatever you want to do, we can just chill and do absolutely nothing, it doesn't matter as long as me and you are here. Um, so that's just saying, <clears throat> basically, you know, it's kind of like that D'Angelo, Lauren Hill, uh, nothing even matters type thing, so uh, we don't have to go anywhere, we don't have to do nothing special, just the presence, just the company, it's like, uh, the ultimate, so to speak. It's like we're kind of in our own bubble. Not to say we can't go do things, not to say that those things aren't fun or important, but it's just saying that when it's real and when it's strong, that it doesn't require all of these outside things. And those are just icing on the cake. And the, the, what actually makes it what it is is what's really there. So uh, other than that, uh, it's a pretty pretty straightforward song. I want to give a shout out to, uh, to Ryan, Ryan's Kill Records, uh, Russell, uh, these are two people who kind of encouraged me to use the song officially because uh, originally I had a little bit of reservations uh, when I was still on my journey of kind of venturing into other realms um, because my 
typical work can be very uh, dark conscious type music. So I, I really wasn't doing love songs. I wasn't doing these other genres. I, I, I kind of got encouraged to, to do that more. I always had the ability to do it, but I was just a little bit uh, on the edge about how people respond to me doing a lot of different themes and a lot of different topics. So I want to give them a shout out. Uh, give a shout out to Ski Eastwood for mixing and mastering the song as well. Give a shout out to Ava Live Radio for the live interview, and I provide links to uh, to that as well. Um, and they did an article as well about the single. And there's a lot more to come. So hope everybody enjoyed it. Peace.